fated to be loved by villains. The training you've been waiting for this, surely, in a week, as mentioned in the letter. There is an event that always happens in Elfant around this time of year. It's a class observation event with the house representatives of the students, simply judging by the name. It's really not a big deal, however, if it's a place where a lot of privileged people gather. Such an event is bound to get twisted from all the varying interests clashing. Their presence is to intimidate, not be intimidated. And the more privileged they are, the more they care not to be looked down upon. Now, the event has been blown out of proportions with considerably increased significance. So much so that people, who don't even understand why they are there, sometimes appear. And since Elnor and Gideon's exclusive quests were created at the same time, well... It's obvious how things will unfold. I will finally see his face, Jidin Gelestad Latristan. Originally, there wouldn't even be a chance to make contact with such a person, because in most of the main scenario, he always appears as dead. Ah, but that doesn't mean that Elnor is going to slit his throat. While she does dislike him, she wouldn't commit patricide. I'd. However, it's true that their relationship is complicated, Jidin. For certain reasons has been cold towards Elnor ever since she was a child, and Elnor, influenced by that, also hasn't been particularly fond of him either, rooted from a certain event involving Elnor's mother. Their relationship completely shifted, but in all the storylines, the trigger for the complete collapse of Elnor's mental state and awaken as the Grey Devil Cecil always starts with Jidin's death, so it's not like they're blood enemies, remembering what happens, I couldn't hold in my sire, Right, so I know all this, what's certain is that. If I ever come face to face with this person, there will definitely be something to take away there. It would be of great help in confronting the main antagonist of chapter, the Boy King. It might be rude to think of the Empire's strongest knight like that, but it can't be helped. The danger I am in is in the extreme, where I could die at any given moment. I can't do nothing, even more so from chapter onwards, the Enlightened. Executives of the Devil Worshippers, the main villains of the scenario, they start appearing prominently from chapter, and the Boy King is one of them, they possess power that far surpasses that of the Purifier who have consumed the Devil's essence, reducing him to a speck of dust, in the first place, it's not a boss battle designed to be won through conventional means, if you think about what kind of character the Boy King is, it becomes even more apparent, so, that's that, in the end, solving it will start with Gideon's event that is just around the corner, if I can exactly get what I need, the progress will be much smoother, for now, he's classified as a villain, considering the way his character is set up and how he's portrayed in the scenario, it does align to some extent, with his background, how you treat him is key, now what does this mean? I don't know how much effect Fatal Charm will have, my gift becomes stronger the more extremely aligned to evil the other person is, in that case, with someone like Gideon, who is hard to read, it's uncertain to what extent it will be effective, and, well they have a plan, so that even if I cannot rely on Fatal Charm on this one, I have a backup to still get the thing I need to help myself, however, in order to do that, I have to improve, status in for Dowd Campbell strength. Fragility. Fendurance. Fluck. F. Power. F. Mastery in for attributes. Tristan style swordsmanship grade. Basic current proficiency. Master sword technique of the Tristan Duke family can exert a certain level of power regardless of weapon. Attributes. Breathing technique duckweed grade. Basic current proficiency. A breathing method that dramatically increases the body's endurance and strength when trained for a long time. It has a high compatibility with the Tristan style swordsmanship. I have to train this. In my plan, there is only one way to establish a direct connection with Gideon, and that is through swordsmanship. I don't need to suddenly display a genius-like talent. I just need to show decent enough proficiency in Tristan style swordsmanship. The problem is that I have to achieve it without using desperation, meaning, I need to have my stats and attribute level at a certain point to accomplish it, let's find a way, fortunately, I have quite a few people around me whom I can relay on in times like this, you want me to teach you swordsmanship, Elnor asked with wide eyes, 
This was the response I got when I asked on the way out of the classroom after class. But how long is she going to take classes with the freshmen? As soon as Elnor fully recovered from her injuries, the first thing she did was cut in my class, even as the student council president, shouldn't she eventually return to her original class? Isn't this breaking the rules? In there is no such thing. I think we'll probably take classes together until you graduate, so you don't need to worry about that part. Is this what a student council president should say? Elnor then nodded, as she puffed her chest out like she's proud of what she said. Her face was still expressionless. But this is abuse of power. What are you so proud of anyway? I'd like to ask for some guidance on swordsmanship. By the way, didn't you say that you wanted to study theology? You'll soon start your major classes, so why invest time in something like this? I don't intend on doing it for that long. For now, I need to achieve results in a short period of time. In that respect, the one I can trust the most is Elnor. Whatever the case may be, she's the first person to consider in this field. She's the most familiar with it, and there's no doubt about her swordsmanship skills. Above all, there is no better teacher in learning Tristan style swordsmanship than her. So I asked again, and Elnor's eyes widened as she looked at me for a moment, then, she suddenly turned her back to me, what's wrong, uh, it's nothing, I'm just in a good mood knowing that you trust me, if you're in a good mood, why are you turning your back to me, um, I practiced my happy face for times like these, wait and see. After fidgeting for a while, Elnor finally looked back at me, her eyebrows were slightly raised more than normal, how is it, so? Are you going to teach me swordsmanship or not? You still didn't give me an answer. Or quite the interesting topic you got over there. Hearing the newcomer's voice, Elnor's happy expression immediately crumpled. You have no business interfering. Step aside. Aye is learning swordsmanship limited to one teacher. Alija replied with a smile, which made Elnor's eyebrows grow fiercer. Dad asked me, not you. This is unrelated to you, but before entering the academy, I had good experience as a swordsmanship instructor, while the princess probably haven't taught anyone before, right? Despite her menacing demeanor, it seems that Elnor's personality is still the same. She didn't lie to have taught someone to just counter Elijah, and simply stayed silent. She can be quite stubborn in peculiar ways. I smiled and suggested to Elijah, how about we learn together? I do think that Elnor can provide us some great insights. Well, this is the truth. As far as skill is concerned, there is still a clear gap between the two. If Elnor were to teach her, Elijah would have a lot to learn. Anyway, considering the scenario, Elijah's growth is essential. In that sense, this is a good opportunity to foster her development. Elijah pouted at my words, while Elnor's expression relaxed. Um, is that so, however? Elijah grinned as if she remembered something, then she'll be the learn instructor while we learn together. Hearing this, Elnor's expression darkened again, don't fall for these childish provocations, please, since you insist, be an instructor yourself, then, saying so with a sigh, Elnor's expression relaxed again, but as soon as she heard that, Elijah grinned, as if this was what she's been aiming for all along. Oh, is that so? It's a competition then, what, me or the princess, who is the better teacher, why does it have to be like that? As I squinted at that thought, Elijah continued. Naturally, whoever is better should be the one regularly teaching in the future, don't you think so? What is she talking about now? I didn't say anything. Hey, Elnor laughed as she brushed her hair. Looks like the fledgling freshman has a big ambition. Are you challenging me now? Oh, but I don't think Princess would be good at teaching. Can you take responsibility for that statement? No. Hello, I'm here too, hey.